We have now three possible scenarios for the eruption in the uh, Swartzing volcanic system for the late February to early March. One of them is what you see here, very close to the Swartzengi, within 30 minutes from the earthquake storms, to the appearance of the lava at the surface and the direction of it. This is according to the, according to the Christine Jones daughter. The fissure can be 800 meters. The next likely scenario will be there at the Hagofel, north of the Hagofel, like the one that I predicted previously around uh, one and a half month ago. And uh, I, um, I guess that it may go follow the counter toward the south and the north and toward the peninsula in the, um, near the Grindavik to the east of it. So uh, that is now with a nicer map, a base, good base map, probably studied with the 3D, you know, stereoscopic views. So you can actually see that where it goes. Mine is, uh, what you see here is a, is a rough estimate uh, based on the satellite imagery. And now we have the evidence for that. As we go further away from the uh, areas, uh, from the Swartzengi, the warning time increases from 30 minutes for the near the Sunduka craters to Hagofo, which is around three hours, to the next scenario, which is in the uh, near the Grindovic, if it happens within the wall, defensive wall of it, to five hours, we have time. It it's just it's time to uh, for the magma to reach those areas from the reservoir to those areas. These are again my prediction according to the locations that I thought that they may erupt. Uh, Kristen Jones Rocher has done it uh, elegantly again. Uh, with a better base map and uh, more data available to her. This is again my uh, uh, likely scenarios that are predicted. Now I'm happy that they are doing this. Or if they had it for themselves, they're not publishing it publicly. That is great. Uh, our YouTube uh, work, it seems, that is, uh, is effective on the publication of the data. Next is that the sourcing company who is operating the geothermal power plant released their a stratigraphy of the source saying why it doesn't erupt there. Uh, we know that there is, it's a trade secret. The next uh, possible scenario after Hagafoy is that uh, within the walls of the uh, defense walls of the Grindovic, we will have the eruption. It may go toward the west side of it and create a lot of extensive fa uh, faulting and uh, you know formation of reef within the Grindovic. And uh, that is another likely scenario, but less likely probably in the case that uh, it may go to the easiest path and the quickest, which is to the uh, Sundunka crater series. I had the videos that I made about this uh, probably around uh, four or five weeks ago. And uh, you can compare them with what we have now from the Iceland Meteorological Office. Uh, the main thing of this presentation that Christine had was that uh, the further away we are, the alert time, the time for evacuation is longer. Is the Icelandic town of Grindavik at risk? This is my assessment. The town is evacuated already. It is on a graben formed by the opening up of the mid-Atlantic ridge. And this graben movement cre creates a downfall of blocks of rock inside the town, creates many cracks and fault lines. These cracks and fault lines are invaded by the sea. We know this by just looking at the geography of the surrounding areas. All these bays and, uh, you know, coves are created by the wave action invading the cracks. When the earthquake happened in November 2023, these cracks were reactivated. They were not created. They were there. We just built our structures, filled up the cracks and sinkholes and built our homes there. This eventually will happen. The town will disappear into the sea. If there was not because of the action of the volcanism, which creates more land, we can fill up the town cracks by just doing, you know, what we are doing up to now. But that will be a temporary measure. If we not last, the next earthquake will reactivate these fault lines. We need something more permanent, not like what we have done up to now, which has practically not worked. Because the wave action is against us. We are working against the waves. But my assessment is that the actual lava field created by this eruption in January 2024 is working as a barrier. We have, we will have eruption in the Hagel field north of it. The eruption will create flows toward the south and north. And this is the old lava protecting us against that. 
So Green Week in that sense, in my opinion, is not at risk. Not by the eruption, but by reactivation of the these fault lines and cracks and the wave action. So the best way is actually let the nature, probably the lava, come and fill it up. All those cracks that people return into the home they see, they can be filled. We can remove the structures that we have as much as of it we can, and then let the town be taken by the lava. The only problem is that we don't have enough lava probably, or this is not predictable. But the best option for filling up these cracks was to let the lava come and fill it. We have seen it in the Pompeii and Herculanum. When the lava invades the town, filling up the cracks, invading even toward the sea, it creates a new land and a land that we can build on, build a new town, new harbor. In a way, we may say that it's a lucky situation we have eruption after these earthquakes. Because that eruption, if we guide it, if we have enough magma supply, of course, and lava coming toward it or directing it toward the town, we can actually begin from a clean slate, build a new town, a harbor on the old Grindavik. That's my assessment. This volcanic hazard can be an opportunity for us if we know how to use it. December 2023, an eruption in the Sundunka crater field of the Reckoness Peninsula shocked the world. This volcano erupted right to a geothermal uh, power plant, one of the first in the world. And in January 2024, a second eruption burned parts of the town of the Grindavik. But if it was not for the expertise and the designs of two wonderful daughters of Iceland, this would have been a disaster. They designed walls for the Fregadestral eruption, and they did it here again. And a flotilla of the machinery and contractors implemented their plans, built a wall around the Swartzengi power plant and to the north of the uh, town of the Grindavik. And when the day of the eruption happened, this is what happened. We had the fissure coming from the north in the Hagafell toward the town, opening up the ground in real time, slicing through part of the wall even. But the miracle of the wall stopped the spread of the lava. The lava followed the counter of the wall that these contractors in real time were actually working again on it and stopped it at the point. The solidified part of the lava formed another wall. Based on that and inspired by that, I uh, figured out where it may be the next eruption in this area. We are going for that now at the moment. And uh, I suggested that the north of the Hagafall will this time witness the eruption. And it is quite possible a tongue of the lava from the east of the Grindavik will flow toward the peninsula to the north, top of this image. And here we are. We have now the designs for a new wall toward the east of the Grindavik. This is the SAR images from the German uh, Space Agency. You can see that. A new defensive wall to the east where the lava flow potentially will flow from that toward the sea, from the north of the Hagafell, following the counter of the ground, will protect the Grindavik. You can see their design from the space. And every tourist who enters the aerospace of the Iceland over the peninsula will see that also. A new wall will be added to that to protect the town.